Hey guys, welcome back to Periodic Surfco and welcome back to our SUP build series. In the last video, we were getting ready for our top skin by trimming in the rails, getting our hardware support material installed and all that fun stuff. In this video, we're finally gonna put this top skin on and it's going to look like a completed board. So pretty exciting right there. All right, so before we jump straight into this, let's just go over the method. So what we are going to be doing for the top deck, which is different to the bottom deck, is gluing it on at one plank at a time. Now, if you're using one of our complete kits, you have three leftover 300 mil wide strips, and these three are what are used for the top deck, of course. Now, unlike the bottom, we're not gonna laminate these together ahead of time. We're going to be applying them one strip at a time. Now, this method is a bit slower because you have to wait for glue to dry between layers, but it's more fail safe and it requires less clamps and you can substitute clamps or other things with this method. So we can use twine, rope, anything like that. Now this method that I'm showing you here is the minimal method. So we're using butt joints. We're not worrying about edge treatments. We're just getting the skins on and treating it as it comes up. Now, if you have the facility and means, you can improve this again. So you could go a step further and add a bead and cove to those joints. And that means that you would have a little bit of a socket for your next strip to go into, making alignment easier and also adding a little bit of extra glue surface. It's a very common method you'll see in um, like cedar strip canoes, for example, but we're hoping to show you here that you don't need those facilities. The first strip that goes down is always going to be the center strip, at least for my process. It doesn't have to be the center strip. You could start from one side, work the way out. But for me, this makes sense. Before we apply it, we've already cleaned out our board. Make sure you do that because it's annoying if you don't. But I'm also going to just take note of where our vent plug is going to be. So I know that after the skin is on, we don't miss it. So it is going to be at 700 and 40 mil from the tip. All right, so with the event plug position known, now we can get our center strip mocked up and marked so we know that it's gonna be nice and center and running up and down the board evenly. Now you could mark the center line of this and line it up with the central spine, but because we have these side spines here, I'm just gonna line it up by eye to make sure that this gap and this gap is about the same all the way along. So with that all known, I'll mark at either end the extents of this top board, as well as on all the ribs so we don't apply more glue than we have to. And then we can get ready to clamp this one in place. Now it's always a good idea to do a quick test run of how you're going to clamp this. And here we have lots of options, which is nice. One option is just to use things like, this is just some coals made out of plywood across the board and we can just use standard clamps to kind of keep these weighted down. We can do that on every rib and that will just make sure things are conforming. Now, another really good clamp is just ratchet straps. So we've used these already. So as you can tell, these will be another great option. So I've just wrapped it all the way around and over the bench here. And with just a little bit of ratchet strap, you can see that that is now doing our clamping, at least in this section. Now, the last option that I'm just gonna show you before we actually just jump into it is heavy stuff. Heavy stuff is a really good clamp. So yeah, I'm just using some old dumbbells, but that there, if we had that evenly all over the place, that would be enough clamping pressure. So for the glue, we're using the polyurethane once again. Uh, it is, as you are probably well aware now, our go-to glue for basically everything on these boards. Now. When it comes to the ribs, we're not doing all of the rib. We're only doing to our pencil marks that we did because otherwise it's gonna be a pain in the butt to clean up that squeeze up, it squeeze out, I should say, every time we have to change things. So we're gonna do all of these long strips first. So that's everything with glue. One more thing we can do just to help speed things up is just to lightly wet all of the timber and that will help the glue, one, cure faster. It also means that the glue will foam up a little bit more. So if there is any tiny gaps that do occur, it will help us in uh, removing that flex. So now it's just a matter of lining up our two ends gently. Use that line to that line, lovely. I'm just gonna use a couple of spring clamps here on the nose to hold it in place. 
And one in the center. Right, we'll do the same here at the, at the uh, tail. Now, for the most part, I'm going to be using the coals with the clamps. Of course, you can substitute the clamps with ratchet straps. And we'll just work one end to the other. So remember that with the coals, you don't necessarily need them flat. We just need them to be even. Cool, so that's everything now clamped in place. Now, just to make sure that everything's fitting properly, I'm just pressing firmly down on the deck, uh, focusing really where the spine is, and just making sure there's no, no kind of soft spot. So right here, there's a little bit of flex in that deck. So we'll keep that in mind. And, and same deal here, but everywhere else is feeling good. So in those two soft spots, we're just gonna put some heavy stuff on it. Now I can actually see that in the soft spot, see how this coal here isn't resting on the surface and that's because it's actually got too much pressure on it. Now, unfortunately, because of the thickness of the board, these clamps don't go wide enough, so I couldn't get the, the angle just right, but that's not an issue because we've got heavy things and heavy things make excellent clamps. All right, so that is stage one done. Nice stress-free glue up. And at this stage, it's really easy because we can actually look under the board and we can see that we have nice, even glue coverage on all of our ribs and spines where it needs to be. So, right, so that's the first layer on anyway. So I went ahead and I trimmed off the nose and uh, tail overhang sections because I could. Uh, you don't really need to do it at this stage. And I also removed all of the squeeze out with just a small knife so that the next layer can butt up nice and tight. Once again, make sure anything that falls in, you vacuum it out, blow it out, do whatever it is uh, because you don't want those rattles to be haunting you for the rest of the uh, life of the board. So from here, we can do our side section. Now, to make life a little bit easier, I'm going to roughly trim it closer to the rail position ahead of time because all this overhang means that we can't get clamps into those sections. Um, and to do it, I'm just laying it over the board. And when I have it kind of close to where I want, we'll mark it with enough material there so that we have plenty of room to, to work with if we need to trim, um, trim the seam any because uh, this is curved so we may have to just take off a corner or something. I'm just going to mark every rib position with a bit of chalk on this center section uh, because obviously once these pe pieces go on we're not going to know where the ribs are anymore and as the ribs are where we want the clamping pressure it's kind of important. Now the glue up of these sections is pretty similar to the middle section but of course we've got this seam that we want to get nice and tight so we'll use tape to pull it together so we'll basically run what I call a staple across the seam and stretch it and we'll do that every 200 to 300 mil or 10 to 12 inches I guess up and down the length so you get it pulled in nice and tight and then we can use those same coals across the surface to keep this section flat. Now there is a few extra things that we take into consideration with those coals and one is, is we're actually looking for a tight surface here, not across the whole board. So we may leave this side looser on the clamp than this side, just to get the curvature kind of right in the, the money spot. This is of course a time where you would want to do a dry run if it's your first time doing it. As we've done it several times, we're just gonna jump into it. But remember a dry run just means do it as you would, but don't use any glue. So for the glue up, we're just going to get everything with a nice generous coat of polyurethane. We're gonna start with the rails and these really do need to have a fairly generous layer on it because this has to be really nice and tight. So make sure you don't scrimp on the rails. Now getting glue on the edge here can be a little bit tricky, but I just like to run my finger kind of underneath it and press the glue in. Uh, you can brush it on here as well, but it tends to just take a lot of time and we are still working with glue open times. We don't want to take too long here. And then with everything glued, it's just a matter of flipping our boards on, stapling it and getting on. Now I went ahead and I just wet this board slightly to help 
that glue set a bit quicker, but also foam up a little bit more. So here we can begin to apply the masking tape and we pull it nice and tight into the next skin. And we do that all the way up and down. Tape actually makes a really good clamp. You just have to know the extent. So after a few, uh, few runs like this, you'll start to realize just how much pressure you can put before it starts to slip. That's a really useful method. It's very, very common in veneer work because of course with veneer, you can't apply clamping pressure like you can with a fat piece of timber. Now with it all stapled, it's also not a bad idea to run some packing tape or similar along the entire length because this will help uh, in two things. It will reduce the amount of squeeze out that you have to clean up, but it will also act as additional clamps. Now I'm just gonna start clamping. So with these clamps, I can actually get two jobs done in one. I can get it, the foot to be on the edge of the deck and get that nice and tight, but thread our coal through the actual opening here. And that means that we're not clamping it too tight that it lifts off our actual seam. Now that is all of our coals on and we can see that we have that nice and tight. So now all the way around the edge, we really do need to make sure that we have good pressure where the deck matches the rail. Now here, all of these clamps are actually acting as two things, but everywhere that you see a coal, this could be done with rope looped around. You don't need to necessarily have that many clamps to do this. But everywhere else we do, just really need to make sure that all of this is nice and tight. I'm gonna go around the entire perimeter and just apply a clamp anywhere I see a gap. Now, all of these clamps may look like a lot, but this is where you could use a product like this. So this is just that wrap and move shink wrap or, or cling film. And this will actually do plenty of clamping for you. Well, I try to avoid it just cause it's, a, it's plastic and you know, we don't need to use plastic. We have the clamps, so we might as well use them. But to give you a sample of, of just what you can do is you can wrap this around the board and getting a fairly decent amount of tension on it every time. Now, the more wraps of this you do, the more pressure that you get. But essentially, this here is going to be shrinking as it's uh, getting applied and adding more and more pressure. So we can do this all the way along the board if we had to and this would do all of the clamping that we need. All right, so that is the top skin now on. So this may look like a lot of clamps, but remember anywhere that you can see a coal that can be replaced with rope, ratchet straps, or plastic cling film. And along the rail here, while I'm using real clamps, this is not actually a lot of clamping pressure here. So a PVC homemade clamp, like we showed in a previous video, would be adequate, but these plastic spring clamps, you can get a bag of about 10 for about $5 if they're on sale. So, so we're gonna let this dry and uh, then it's just a matter of flush trimming and then it's on to the next video where we're gonna shape this thing and get it ready for fiberglassing. All right, so that is the nine foot six SUP built basically. So we still need to shape it of course and we need to fiberglass it and install the hardware. But as far as the construction goes, that is it. So in the next video, we will be attaching the nose and tail blocks before we shape the rails in. And then it's onto fiberglassing, which includes the hardware installed. The very last thing I'm going to do today is just mark that vent plug position now while it's still fresh in our mind. So 740 millimeters. So when it does come time to install, we know exactly where we need to drill the hole. So that is it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you click that thumbs up button and leave a comment below. And if you wanna check out our SUP kits or any of our other surfboard kits, you can do that over at diysurfboardkits.com. We are shipping internationally at this stage. Unfortunately, the SUPs are still a little bit too long for our international freight restrictions, but we are working on a few methods of providing it at shorter lengths that you can still glue up and get a very strong deck. So that's it for this video. Like always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.